Years ago, Lieutenant General Randy House deployed to Saudi Arabia for what would be the beginning of the Gulf War. Well, I was a brigade commander. My task force, my brigade, had right at 6,000 soldiers, 117 M1s, 76 Bradley fighting vehicles, 24 howitzers, and associated trucks and trailers and support vehicles. In the first years of the 1990s, coalition forces made up a combined effort of the United States and 35 other nations assembled against Iraq in response to Saddam Hussein's invasion and annexation of Kuwait. This came to be known as the Gulf War. Saddam Hussein's military had been fighting the Iranians for nine years. They were a very experienced combat force. They had uh, top of the line previously Soviet Union combat gear. So we went against a highly trained army with, uh, that was very large, much, much larger than the one we, went, we put against them with very good equipment. The war consisted of two phases. The first, codenamed Operation Desert Shield, which was the operations leading up to the buildup of troops and defense of Saudi Arabia. Then President George H.W. Bush announced a combat phase in January 1991. Tonight, 28 nations, countries from five continents, Europe and Asia, Africa and the Arab League, have forces in the Gulf area standing shoulder to shoulder against Saddam Hussein. The 43-day conflict known as Operation Desert Storm. We initially went in there to just protect uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia from the Republican Guards coming out of Kuwait and, and, and crushing uh, Saudi Arabia. And then it became apparent because the original mission that President Bush gave the military was to eject uh, Saddam Hussein from Kuwait and his uh, Republican Guards and other forces there. General House commanded troops for over 33 years, both in peacetime and wartime, leading every level of command from an infantry platoon in the 82nd Airborne Division to Deputy Commander-in-Chief of the U.S. Pacific Command. But leading a tank brigade during Desert Storm still stands apart decades later. I think that was the most enduring legacy of the war was fought for a very just cause. And the military got in, performed the mission, performed it very professionally, and much quicker than anybody anticipated against a, such a uh, proven military. And then we got out. House says the swift victory over enemy forces was in large part thanks to the leadership of America's Commander-in-Chief, President George H.W. Bush. He gave wonderful guidance to the military through his chain of command, especially General Powell and General Schwarzkopf. And then he let the military do what we do best, and that's fight and win our nation's war. Since retiring to civilian life, House is an integral part of the growth and success of the Brazos Valley Veterans Memorial at College Station's Veterans Park. So much that when you stop and visit the Gulf War Monument, you may notice a striking resemblance. This was the new uh, camouflage pattern we'd had up until this time. It was green and, and brown and black focused on Europe. And so this, this they, they came up with this camouflage very quickly. Uh, and, and the desert really had the, all these colors in it. The Veterans Memorial stands as a testament to the men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces, that their sacrifices made thousands of miles away during the Gulf War, now more than three decades ago, won't be forgotten.